Don't worry too much when you can Google it. Larry and Sergey paid the price, okay? Join us as we continue our story about the architects of the mighty plex called Google here on Opulence Luxury, where we discuss the luxurious life of the rich. Have you subscribed? Have you turned on notifications? Great. Let's get into the story. The inception of the transformative partnership between Sergey Brin and Larry Page can be traced back to a rather unexpected source. Of all things, an argument. In the summer of 1995, Brin, then a second-year undergraduate student in Stanford University's Computer Science Department, found himself engaged in lively debates with Larry Page, an engineering major from the University of Michigan. Brin, known for his gregarious nature, had volunteered to guide prospective first-year students around the campus and neighboring San Francisco area, and Page happened to be in his group. The initial encounter was far from harmonious, marked by incessant clashes and debates on topics ranging from urban planning to other philosophical differences. Page, who initially found Brin's strong opinions somewhat obnoxious, recalled the contrasting dynamics between Brin's social nature and his own reticence. Despite these initial differences, fate brought them together when Page enrolled at Stanford a few months later, choosing human-computer interaction pioneer Terry Winograd as his advisor. As Page embarked on the search for a doctoral thesis topic, he explored various intriguing ideas, but eventually gravitated toward the burgeoning World Wide Web. Intriguingly, Page's interest in the web did not initially stem from the desire to revolutionize search. Instead, he was captivated by the web's mathematical characteristics, a vast, interconnected graph where each computer represented a node and each link on a web page formed a connection between nodes. Recognizing the web as potentially the largest graph ever created, Page saw the opportunity to explore this dynamic and growing landscape for valuable insights. Page's exploration into the link structure of the web laid the foundation for what would eventually become a groundbreaking approach to web search. The journey had begun, setting the stage for the development of a transformative technology that would reshape the way people access information online. Larry Page's exploration into the link structure of the World Wide Web proved to be a fruitful course of study. One key observation was that while it was easy to follow links from one web page to another, discovering links back to a particular page was not as straightforward. Page found this discrepancy intriguing and identified a significant opportunity to understand and track who was linking who to a specific page. To comprehend the significance of this endeavor, a brief detour into the world of academic publishing is necessary. In the academic realm, especially in the hard sciences like mathematics and chemistry, getting published and cited is paramount. Academic papers are built on a foundation of citations, where each paper cites previously published works as proof points supporting the author's argument. The number of citations, along with subsequent citations of the paper, plays a crucial role in evaluating the paper's impact and importance. This practice of pointing to other people's work to build one's own is known as citation, and there is even a branch of science dedicated to its study, bibliometrics. Tim Berners-Lee's motivation to enhance the citation system in academic publishing led to the creation of the World Wide Web. In turn, Larry Page and Sergey Brin's attempt to reverse engineer this web, specifically through understanding and quantifying backlinks, laid the groundwork for the development of Google. Citation emerged as the common thread connecting these efforts. So, returning to Page's original research on backlinks, he embarked on a project he named Backrub. Recognizing that the entire web operated on the premise of citation, where a link served as a form of citation, Page envisioned that counting and qualifying each backlink on the web could significantly enhance its value. 
At the time of Backrub's conception, the web was comprised of approximately 10 million documents with an unknown number of links between them, a scale that exceeded the typical bounds of a student project. Undeterred by the challenges, Page initiated the construction of his web crawler. The complexity and scale of the idea intrigued Sergey Brin, a polymath who had explored various projects without settling on a thesis topic. Brin found the premise of Backrub fascinating and saw it as an exciting project, not only for its exploration of the vast expanse of the web representing human knowledge, but also because of his affinity for working with Larry Page. This collaboration laid the foundation for what would evolve into Google, an innovation driven by the pursuit of understanding and harnessing the interconnected nature of information on the World Wide Web. During this period, both Brin and Page were also actively involved in the Stanford Digital Library Project, SDLP, which aimed to develop the necessary technologies for a comprehensive and universal digital library. This project received funding from the National Science Foundation and other federal agencies. Simultaneously, Brin and Page were members of a Stanford University computer science research team that secured funding from massive digital data systems. Notably, this program was managed on behalf of the CIA and the NSA by major intelligence and military contractors. On the side, these guys were working for the government. The first fruit of their collaboration was a paper they authored together. It was titled, The Anatomy of a Large-Scale Hypertextual Web Search Engine. Larry Page and Sergey Brin collaborated on developing a ranking system that acknowledged the significance of links from influential sources and penalized those from less important ones. Consider Amazon.com, a site linked by various entities, ranging from tech industry partners to a teenager in Detroit. While a human observer might prioritize the business partner's link for Amazon's global standing, the challenge would be how an algorithm could comprehend this nuance. Their breakthrough resulted in PageRank, an algorithm named after Larry Page, which considered both the number of links to a specific site and the links from each of those linking sites. This methodology, akin to academic citation counting, effectively evaluated the importance of web links. So, following our simplified story scenario, where only a few sites linked to the teenager's site, and these linking sites had limited connections, PageRank would rank the teenager's site as less significant compared to Intel's extensive network of links, at least concerning Amazon's related importance. Not only did the engine perform well, but Page and Brin recognized its scalability with the expanding web. As the web grew, so did the effectiveness of PageRank, prompting the founders to christen their creation Google, a nod to Google, denoting the number one followed by 100 zeros. In August 1996, a year after their initial meeting, they unveiled the first version of Google on the Stanford website. Within the Stanford community, Google gained popularity. Motivated by this success, Brin and Page enhanced the service, incorporating full-text search and expanding the index to encompass more pages. They encountered the significant challenge of computing required for a growing search engine of that size and lacked the funds for new hardware. Undeterred, they forged Google into existence using borrowed and repurposed equipment, extracting a hard drive from the network lab and repurposing an idle CPU from the computer science loading docks. Page's dorm room became a makeshift machine lab, and Brin's dorm room transformed into an office and programming center. The project became legendary within the computer science department and campus network administration offices. At one point, the back rub crawler consumed nearly half of Stanford's entire network bandwidth, a remarkable feat considering Stanford's exceptional networking infrastructure. Thank you, Stanford, for not holding out on these guys. Knowledge is power. Seize him. Cut his throat. Stop. Oh, wait, I've changed my mind. Let him go. Power is power. 
Forget that woman. You know how it ended for her, right? In a world where knowledge is synonymous with power, Google emerges as an unparalleled giant, offering a gateway to a vast reservoir of information through the simplicity of a few keyboard inputs. As of February 2023, Google Sites secured the top position as the most frequented multi-platform in the United States. With slightly over 274.49 million unique visitors, Google commanded a substantial market share of 61.4% among the leading search engine providers in the US. Historically, on the 19th of August, 2004, Google went public as a company offering 19,605,052 shares at $85 per share. In 2011, Google managed an astounding 3 billion daily searches. To meet this demand, the company established 11 data centers globally, each equipped with several thousand servers. These strategically positioned data centers not only facilitated the efficient management of the dynamic workload, but also ensured Google's continued ability to handle the ever-expanding user base. By May of the same 2011, Google celebrated a significant milestone as the monthly unique visitors to its platform surpassed the 1 billion mark for the first time. From then till now, the phenomenon of Google has morphed into something that is huge, and I dare say beyond the imagination of its founders. Consider these statistics. Google handles about 5.9 million search queries every minute. Google holds a dominating market share of 91.47% in the global search engine market. The search index maintained by Google is in excess of 100 million gigabytes. In 2023, Google Sites generated a substantial $206.54 billion in advertising revenue. All of those numbers are just for the search engine alone. However, the parent company, Alphabet Incorporated, which we all still call Google, is growing everywhere. Through billion-dollar acquisitions and movements into other industries, what started as a thesis idea is now everywhere, from a search engine to subsidiaries, focusing on the challenges of aging and associated diseases. Collaboratively, these two men have changed the nature of information as we know it in something akin to the way Johannes Gutenberg gave us modern printing. Today, Sergey Brin and Larry Page have relinquished everyday administrative duties at the company, remaining only as co-founders, board members, employees, and controlling shareholders. According to Forbes, Sergey has a net worth of $114.4 billion, while Larry is worth $119.4 billion. And how lavish are they living? Quite lavish, you bet. Let us talk about the air travel. In 2005, they made a significant purchase, a Boeing 767-200 commercial airliner from Qantas for $15 million. Adding another $10 million for interior redesign, the plane was transformed into a private jet capable of accommodating 50 passengers. By 2012, Page, Brin, and former Google CEO Eric Schmidt expanded their aviation collection to include eight planes, featuring two Gulfstream V, a Boeing 757, and a Dassault Dornier Alpha Jet fighter plane. Beyond aircraft ownership, the trio invested in a private terminal at San Jose International Airport in 2013, spending $82 million on its construction. Operated by Signature Flight Support, the terminal is available for use by other Silicon Valley businesses and executives. Additionally, Google, under its real estate subsidiary Planetary Ventures LLC, acquired control of Moffett Field from NASA in 2014, securing a 60-year lease. Prior to this, they paid NASA an annual fee exceeding $1 million to house their private jets in one of Moffett Field's hangars. Bryn possesses an opulent residence in Alpine, New Jersey, valued at $3.3 million. Larry Page has a specially designed eco-friendly compound in Palo Alto. 
He is also known to have purchased multiple islands in the Caribbean and South Pacific. Page indulged in a $45 million yacht named Senses, featuring extravagant amenities such as a helipad, gym, multi-level sun decks, 10 luxurious suites, and interior design by renowned French designer Philippe Stark. Brin's super yacht, the Dragonfly, valued at $80 million, boasts an open-air cinema and jacuzzi on the sun deck, which doubles as a dance floor. Page and Brin currently lead private lives, staying away from the public eye, especially Page, who has chosen a more secluded lifestyle. Unfortunately for them, when you are atop the chain of a $1.774 trillion company, you are going to work extra hard to stay in the shadows. From the Soviet Union and a Jewish home in Michigan, these two soulmates have undoubtedly changed the world. Thank you, Sergey Brin. Thank you, Larry Page.